I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of how loved art thou, Israel. This is a message to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latin Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. How loved art thou, Israel? The Father sends his prophets rising early, and he sends angels. There are angels walking amongst us, there are powerful angels encamped around the nation of Israel. And when we are turned unto the Father in truth and in sincerity, we can call out to him and he will send an angel unto us. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the second book of the prophet Esdras, chapter 4, verse 1. The books of Esdras can be found in the Apocrypha, which is the middle book of the Bible. Our forefather, the prophet Esdras, on behalf of the nation of Israel, called unto the Father so that he in this flesh could have some understanding. Verse 1, And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer. Now, because our forefather, the prophet Esdras, was doing this on behalf of the nation of Israel, and that these words would be written because for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. We would be able to understand that our forefather, the prophet Esdras, called out to the father and wanted to care for his nation. And an angel was sent unto him. And the prophet Esdras asked many questions, some of which he did not get answers to, not actually being able to comprehend in this flesh. But more than enough is written in the books of Esdras for us today. Now, when these angels come to speak, who is actually speaking to our forefathers and our foremothers? The book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 13. And Yahweh answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So this is who is speaking to us through the angels. This is who is speaking to us through the angels as the Father spoke to us through Yahweh Shai. As the Father speaks to us through the prophets, the Father is always keeping his covenant with those that keep covenant with him. Now, the deceiver, which is the devil, which are the rulers of this last wicked kingdom, have made angels sort of a fairy tale for many of our brothers and sisters. It's kind of hard to comprehend, but they exist. And they have great, great power and have power to do miraculous things on behalf of those that the Father deems worthy. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 7. And behold, the angel of Yahweh came unto him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. So angel touches him, the chains fall off his hand. Verse 8, And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So all of this is going on. Our forefather thinks, Am I dreaming? Is this real? Am I seeing a vision? Verse 10, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Brought him straight out of prison. Power over the elements. The gate opening as if on its own, by itself. So here again is another example of the love of the Father for his nation, the nation of Israel, and those of the nation of Israel. Also showing, again, the power of the angels that are in the midst of us 
and that encamp around us to protect us. And they are not to be trifled with. The second book of Chronicles, chapter 32, verse 19. So the Assyrians, with their king Sennacherib, came against the nation of Israel. Verse 19, and they spake against the most high power of Jerusalem, as against the gods of the people of the earth, which were the work of the hands of man. So here they are disrespecting the one true living most high power, making him equal with idols, things made by the hands of man, when Yahweh has made all things. Verse 20, and for this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. They called upon the father. How dare you disrespect our most high power? Verse 21, And Yahweh sent an angel, which cut off all the mighty men of valor, and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he was come into the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. You want to blaspheme the name of the one true living most high power? He doesn't even have to come down here himself. He'll send one angel, one angel against all his mighty men, his captains, his leaders, everyone. So that we have an understanding how many men were killed that night by the angel of Yahweh. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 36. Then the angel of Yahweh went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. That is 185,000 dead bodies, souls cut off from the body. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. This is who we are in a covenant with. This is who we are in an agreement with. And when we are turned unto the Father in truth and in sincerity, we call unto him. He will defend us mightily, mightily. And he will not tolerate being blasphemed or disrespected. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 21. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. So here he was in his royal garb, speaking unto the Israelites. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a power and not of a man. And immediately the angel of Yahweh smote him, because he gave not the Most High power the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. These are the spirits that dwell amongst us and watch over us and are sent to protect us and have at times been sent to judge us. Our forefather, King David, numbered the nation of Israel, which was forbidden, and an angel was sent against Israel. These are powerful, powerful beings. And this is a warning to the wicked. This is a warning to the wicked. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 49, So shall it be at the end of the world. World meaning time frame, age, span of time. We are currently in the span of time of the devil, which are the rulers of this last wicked kingdom filled with the spirit of Satan. They have been given a time to rule. And when their dominion is over, that is the end of the world. So it shall be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. So one angel was able to take out 185,000 powerful men of war. Do you think you can stand against an angel at the end? Do you think there will be any place you can hide? Any place you can run to? Do you think you can negotiate with an angel? For there is not a single scripture where an angel was negotiated with. They come to do their job. Verse 50, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So powerful, powerful heavenly bodies with physical power and spiritual power, able to time travel, able to manipulate the elements. These stand guard over the nation of Israel. 
And if we look closely in the spirit, we will continue to understand who we are unto the Father. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 3. Know ye not, Israel, that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Powerful heavenly bodies, and the righteous shall judge them. These are signs of who we truly are unto the Father. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he, he being Yahweh, the most high power, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the creator and destroyer. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Which angel has Yahweh said that unto? Verse 13, but to which of the angels said he, he being Yahweh, at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Yahweh Shai is the first begotten son of Yahweh the Most High Power, and he is the head of the body, and that body being the nation of Israel, who was Jacob. Jacob have I loved. How loved art thou, Israel? Judging everything upon the earth and judging the angels as well. This is why this refinement has been so stringent, has been so tough. Real power is going to be placed into our hands. Into the hands of the elect and into the hands of the 144,000 real power. The last scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 5. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Power over the world to come. The kingdom of Israel. World, time frame, age, span of time, without end. Verse 6, but one in a certain place testified saying, what is man that thou, Yahweh, art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. And the one spoken of is our forefather King David. This is in the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verses 4 through 6. This is who we are, Israel. This is who we are. And it's time to let this world go. True power is going to be granted unto the nation of Israel, world without end given power and as Adam was given dominion over all things so shall Israel be given this magnificent privilege and the only way to receive this is to be of the seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and to be turned unto the father and to follow our king of kings Yahweh back to the father to believe on Yahweh Shai and to believe on the one who sent him, that they love us this much. And all we have to do in truth and in sincerity is accept the love of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai and do that which he asks of us as the only family that he has known upon the earth. And the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, shall guide us until our king returns. All there is to do right now is to dust off our spiritual garments and prepare ourselves to be presented unto our king of kings. So that he may present us unto the father.
Make no mistake about it, World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9-11 Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahawashai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahawashai is Lord, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, Thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world. Remember who you are and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.